Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're gonna be recreating this video tab element from elegantthemes.com. This is a really neat little element uh, that has a nice hover effect on the buttons when you hover over them. And when you click the buttons, the video in the middle switches to whichever video uh, you clicked. So we're gonna replicate most of this with a few changes here and there. So let's jump over to a fresh Oxygen install, and we're gonna go ahead and edit the sample page with Oxygen and get started on building this. Now, before we start laying out our structure, let's just look really closely at what they have here. I think this will be best with probably a three columns element, Then we'll build some buttons out of divs with these nice hover effects, and then we'll use a code block in the middle so that we have a single video element and we're swapping out the source for that video element when the buttons are clicked. This is gonna really help on load time so you don't have a bunch of videos uh, loading, well, eight videos loading as soon as the uh, page is loading. So that should be a lot more performant. So let's jump over here and just get started. So I'm gonna add a section, and then we're gonna add our columns element, and we're gonna do this 25, 50, 25 layout. And then just to get this out of the way, let's drop our code block in. And we're gonna go over here to this video element and just copy the HTML so we don't have to write it. And then we'll strip out the stuff we don't need. So we'll copy this element's outer HTML and then jump back over here and go to the PHP and HTML editor and paste that in. Now, we do not need both sources. They have that because they have WebM as well as MP4, but we're just gonna do MP4 in this case. And we don't need this data attribute video source. And we don't need this data source attribute either. We're actually just gonna use a source attribute, so SRC equals, and that's where our uh, video URL is gonna go. We're gonna change the ID of this video element to video, and then we're gonna add our own class here, and we're gonna call it ET underscore tab underscore video. And then we're gonna change our height to 375, because I just know we don't want it that tall. And now that we have that set up, we'll come in and drop our video in later, but let's go in and add some CSS to make sure it's not super uh, wide. We're gonna do ET tab video max width 100%, and that's gonna make it kind of respect the constraints of its parent. And while we're in the code block, I'm gonna go ahead and set up our JavaScript. So let's go to JavaScript, and we're gonna do jQuery, and then we need to make sure we are listening for a click on our button element. So we're gonna call this, uh, we're gonna look for the ET tab button selector. And on click, we're gonna run a function. Now, a couple things we need to do. We need to grab the video element as an object. So we're gonna do ver video equals query selector. And then this is gonna be our ET tab video class, and then we'll use that here in a minute, but then what we wanna do is we wanna change jQuery ET tab video, and then we're gonna target the source element inside that video element, and we're gonna change its attribute source to jQuery this dot data video. So we're gonna use a data attribute on the buttons, uh, which we can access with dot data, and it's gonna be data dash video. So then when we click our buttons, it's gonna change the source to the appropriate video URL or path. And then uh, once all that's done, we wanna do video dot load. Okay, so that's pretty much all of our custom code that we need. Now we can get into building our button elements. So let's jump over here to this column and let's add a div. And remember that class we just used in our JavaScript, we need to make sure we use that class for these divs. So it's gonna be et underscore tab underscore button. If we get this wrong, nothing will work and we'll probably wanna look uh, here first to make sure we have the proper selector. Now let's add an icon to this. So we're gonna do an icon and we'll add a class of et tab button underscore underscore icon. And then we'll add a label. So we'll do text and we're gonna do a class of et tab button label. 
Now we can work on styling this up. Let's select the uh, div itself. And first, because this is gonna be clickable, let's go to advanced custom CSS and set it to cursor pointer. That's gonna give us that familiar kind of gloved hand pointer effect when we go over that element. Now let's do size and spacing. Let's do something like 32 pixels all the way around. Actually, we need much less on the left and right, I think. If we look over at the example, yeah, and 32 is gonna be too much. So we'll do eight all the way around. That'll work a lot better. And then we're gonna go back to primary and stack everything horizontally. And then we want a couple of things. We wanna transition on this. So I'm gonna use a utility class. I'm gonna call it ET transition. I'm gonna go to advanced effects, transition, and set this to 0 0.4 seconds, ease in out. Now we also want a box shadow on this button. So let's go back to the button and go to advanced effects box shadow. And they're using kind of a bluish color for their shadow. So we'll probably kind of copy that uh, loosely and then set it to slightly transparent. Let's change the offset. Blur, make our blur kind of big. Spread negative, do like negative 10. I like to do a negative spread on some of these. If I'm not doing a multi-layered box shadow via custom CSS, I like to do a negative spread with a pretty big blur that gives it a more natural, uh, interesting look. Uh, and then let's just reduce the opacity here a little bit more. And then on hover for this button, we're gonna go to the hover state. We want to have the same color, but slightly less transparent with the same settings essentially, which I don't remember exactly what they were, but it should be pretty close. I think the blur was maybe a little bit bigger. So let's go back here and see what that looks like. So now we have this nice subtle effect. Um, we also want to do a scale effect because over here they have this uh, hover effect where the button uh, gets a little bit wider, but they're using margins to do that. And I don't like uh, applying transition to margins because it tends to not be very performant. So we're going to use scale instead. So we're going to go to hover, advanced, effects, transform, and we're going to add a scale of 1.1 here on the X, 1.1 on the Y, and then one on the Z. Next up, we need to make this button not look terrible. So we're gonna go back to the original state and go ahead and go to borders and apply a little bit of a border radius, like eight pixels. And then we're gonna style these elements inside of here. So we're gonna change this thumbs up to a play icon. We're gonna set it to a pretty light gray because we it's kind of like a disabled state before you click it. And then we're gonna change the size to something like 32 pixels. Now on the label, we're gonna to go to advanced typography. We're gonna beef up the font weight, lower the font size, make sure it's a dark black, one pixel letter spacing and uppercase. And we'll call this generic label. And now let's select our button itself and let's make sure everything's centered. Let's grab our label again, go back to advanced size and spacing, and add eight pixels of margin on the left. And then on our button itself, we can go to advanced size and spacing and set its width to 100%. So we have this nice looking button now that's pretty similar to what's on the example site. But one bit of custom CSS we need is to change the icon color when the button is hovered. So for that, we're gonna add a style sheet. So go to manage style sheets, add a style sheet. I'll call it main because all of my styles will probably live in here. And I'll just add a little comment saying video tab element so that I know that's is where all my styles for that live. And then we'll do ET tab button hover ET tab icon. And then we'll just change the color of that to blue to test and make sure that that works. Let's see here. And actually I messed up my selector here. So it's gonna be button underscore underscore icon. And now you can see that that uh, changes to blue when we hover it. Uh, but that's not quite the color I want. Let's go back to the icon and just uh, do a more saturated blue here when it's hovered and copy that. Then we'll go back to our gray and then back to our style sheet here 
and paste in that hex code that we just grabbed. Now you can see we have that nice blue color when we hover, but we also want this icon to transition so we can add our transition utility class and just do that really, really simply. Now the other thing these buttons are gonna need is that data attribute. And before I duplicate these buttons, I'm gonna go ahead and add that so that it's in place. So let's just do an attribute called data video. And for now, we'll leave the value blank because we'll add in some video URLs there here in a little bit. Let's go to advanced size and spacing and add 16 pixels of margin on the top and bottom of these. And now let's duplicate that four times and then let's add another one, drop it over here, and duplicate it four times. So now you can see we're getting this kind of tab layout like we wanted. Now let's go to this column and make sure everything's centered, same here. And now let's drop in our video for this uh, code block and make sure that it looks okay because we may need to adjust the styling and such here. So I'm gonna pull up my uh, Unclutter, which is an app for Mac, that gives me this tray up here, it has a clipboard history and all this fun stuff. And I'm gonna copy the relative path to the video we want to have loaded initially, and I'm gonna paste it into the source attribute on this element. Now you can see that we have a video here. But you'll notice the video isn't quite filling up the area that is available to it. So what we'll do here is we'll do an object fit, which I believe we can just throw directly on this video element. So we'll do style, object, fit, cover, and then apply that. And that should cause our video to go ahead and fill the, uh, the parent container. So let's go back out of here and just let's take a look on the front end and appreciate our handiwork here for a minute before we add the final bit. So we hover, 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 looks really nice. When we click, nothing happens because we don't have any uh, video URLs in there just yet. So we're gonna go in and start adding those. So this first one is going to load up the initial video, which is this build MP4. And then the second one, let's just make it load one of these other ones. We'll only do four so that we're not repeating ourselves too awful much uh, in this video. Drop that in here. And this is transforms. Now let's grab the next one here do the third button and again we're just going to advanced attributes we have that data video attribute and we're pasting the relative path to the video in to the value of that attribute so let's go up here and grab this last one and add it to this button and we're just going to drop it in and then let's test and see if our code portion works that we already set up. So if we click here, we should have no change. If we click here, we should get a different video and we don't. So usually when something like this doesn't work, we can go into the console and see what is happening. And it looks like we have an issue in our JavaScript. So let's jump back over here, go into the code block and figure out exactly what's going on. And since we used our console, we know that the issue is with query selector. And in this case, the problem is that we need document dot query selector and not just query selector. So anytime you've written a bit of custom JavaScript or even pasted it from somewhere else and something's not working, be sure to check your console because it's gonna give you most likely the clues you need. And even if we say, you know, what's going on here? I don't know why this is broken. You can click this little reference here where it says index, especially if the code's in a code block. This will take you directly to the line of code that's broken and it will tell you query selector is not defined because we misused that. We need that document dot query selector. So let's apply that and let's jump up to the front end. And then once you've applied your fix, you can check your console for issues, when you click there, no problem. And when you click, we're seeing now that our videos are swapping out like we wanted to. So if we were using this on a live site, we obviously would not be using videos from the Elegant Themes website. You'd wanna swap in your own videos. And then we'd go ahead and add the video paths to these other buttons so that you'd have the full set of eight. Now, the nice thing about the way we set this up is that only this first video is gonna be loaded when this website's loaded. The others are only loaded when these buttons are clicked. 
So I'm pretty happy with this, and I hope that you learned a little bit along the way. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to build a video tab element similar to what's on the Elegant Themes homepage in Oxygen using basic Oxygen building blocks and a little bit of custom code. Thank you very much for watching.